Hi, everybody. Father Bill Holtzinger here, pastor of Holy Trinity Catholic Church in Beaverton, Oregon. And this is your Friday Reflection. Or maybe I should call it really a, a Good Friday Reflection because it is Good Friday if you're watching this when I just posted it. Today, we celebrate Christ's death. That sounds weird, I know. We celebrate someone's death, right? And it's not because we're mad at him or we hate him. It's because we love him and it's because he loved us even more. I put in, uh, right above me here on this door uh, the San Damiano cross. And it's a wonderful catechetical tool uh, of a cross. It was built or created in the 1100s. And in the year 1205, a young man named Francis, soon to be called St. Francis uh, thereafter, was praying before this cross in the midst of a grand spiritual conversion in his heart. And from this cross, he heard Jesus say, rebuild my church. Now this, this cross was actually in a small chapel and it was dilapidated. And he interpreted that more literally as this chapel needs to be rebuilt. And so thus began some uh, processes in his, his situation to make that happen. But more than that, the life of St. Francis, his evangelical zeal for the gospel to proclaim Christ crucified and risen became his one unifying goal. And Catholics and Protestants today still revere him because of his amazing commitment to Jesus as his passionate love for him and living it out in a radical, radical way. In this actual cross, if you were to look at it more deeply, as I mentioned, it's a catechetical tool. And on it has pictures of the people around the event of the crucifixion. And I'd encourage you, if you ever see this, to take a look closely there on there, because you'll see Mary, you'll see John, you'll see Longinus, the, the, the um, person that uh, had a spear and put it through his side into his heart where water and blood flowed out. You have a, a, another soldier with a sponge for uh, the gall and the bitter wine that he was going to taste. You have all the other, the other Marys as well. There's many characters. There's other saints, or I should say uh, angels in this image, and even Jesus himself on the top there with a small little cross and a, the image of the Father via a hand. Uh, there's just a lot of things there that are part of this uh, wonderful, beautiful uh, style of, cru of crucifix. And crucifixes are important to us as Catholics because it is through the cross that we finally would have resurrection, that we'd have eternal life. In fact, we cannot have eternal life without going through the cross. And it is Jesus himself who did all that heavy lifting for us. He clung to his humanity as a divine person. He's one person, human and divine. And as he dies, he passes through death with his humanity, right? and then brings in humanity through death, which then crushes death as far as humanity is concerned. So now we have access to eternal life because Christ crushed it. Christ has defeated death. The powers of death no longer have power over us, ultimately. That's, that's what we need to realize in this whole event of the cross. There's so much more to say, but in the scriptures, in the second reading, we hear from Hebrews today. And I just want to read this maybe offer a little reflection, um, and I'm not sure what Deacon Brett will be speaking about, but I, I imagine it's going to be more about the, uh, the gospel and other stuff. But I just want to hit the Hebrews text here. And this is Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, and verse, uh, chapter 5, 7 through 9. Brothers and sisters, since we have a, high, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. So in other words, we need to be evangelical in this, that Christ was crucified for us. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. This is amazing. So this is key. Like, why did Jesus do this amongst other ways he could have, you could say, repaired the fall and helped us and given us eternal life? Well, what greater thing could a person have done than to laid down their life for their friends, right? Jesus says this, and he then lives it out. But he is the high priest. He is the one that can sympathize with us, and we know this because he lived a life like us, and he also then experienced death like us. In fact, probably in some cases more heinous than many. Again, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, 
yet without sin. Think about this. Maybe you carry a sin that you struggle with. Maybe there's a sin that you don't believe even God could forgive. Or it's weighted you down, you don't want to admit it. Maybe it's you've tucked it away. But know that God has been tempted. He knows our sins. And because He knows our sins, He wants to absolve us of our sins. He wants to forgive us. And so He's been tempted. He knows what that temptation is. And He wants us to be like Him, to not give in to them. And where we have failed, He's the High Priest. He's going to absolve us of our sins. So do not be afraid. The verse continues, So let us confidently approach the throne of grace. Think of grace as power. Jesus has power, and we're called to approach him. Though we may be afraid, remember, he is our brother. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. And there is no time better than now, right? If you are weighted down by sin, there's no better time than to be forgiven of that whatever that sin is, and come to Jesus. He is calling you. He wants you to be with him intimately. He loves you so much that he died for you. Verses, uh, chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to, those, to the one who was able to save him from death. So who is he praying to? He's praying to his father the one who is able to save him from death. It continues, And he was heard because of his reverence. Jesus loved the Father, and the Father loved the Son, and the Father would rescue the Son, and the Son is going to rescue us. He's going to then reconcile us to his Father. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. Isn't that a mystery, huh? So he suffered death, and he suffered humiliation. He suffered betrayal. He suffered so many things. Back then, right, back 2,000 years, and, and actually now today in our own sins. But he was made perfect through those, being obedient. He knows our sins. Again, son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. He was perfectly obedient to his father unto death. And this is hard because I think we struggle to be obedient. I know in lots of ways I struggle. The, the, the vows that, and the promises that priests take, you would think that celibacy is the most difficult. No. The most difficult one is obedience. Within us, in myself as well, there is a rebellion that keeps popping up. But we don't have to be enslaved by that because Christ has conquered death, has conquered sin, and he wants us not to be enslaved by sin. So he wraps sin, takes it to the cross, and crushes it. Again, so now humanity can pass through, for he has shown the way. So do not be afraid. This Today, we celebrate in many ways. At Holy Trinity, at 9 a.m., if you see this by this point, our school will be doing a reenactment, a passion play. Come to the church. It's wonderful. They've been practicing for weeks. This is a great way to remember what Jesus has done for us. And when we appreciate what, what Jesus has done for us, when we appreciate what anybody has done for us, which is a sign of love, we're always so thankful. This is so important. It's so important that we recognize what Jesus has done for us. Because I think, I know for myself, I can be busy about my day, about doing so many things, and forget. And be kind of ho-hum about it. Yeah, yeah, Jesus loves me. He died on the cross. No, no. This is the day that we really need to dig deep and think and, and open our hearts to this reality that Jesus died on the cross. At 2 o'clock on Good Friday today, we will be offering also a station to the cross with the staff, myself, Deacon Brett, and others, part of the staff. And I want to encourage you maybe to go to that. If you can't go to the 9 a.m., you can see Passion Play by the, our, our school students. And then... In the evening at 7 p.m., we have our Good Friday service. And I think Aaron has already described the details of that, but we'll be able to venerate the cross. You can kneel. You can genuflect. It's the only time we ever genuflect to anything that's not truly Christ, but a symbol, the vehicle, in fact. This is the strangeness. We, we venerate a, a vehicle of death. Can you imagine venerating like a, an electric chair or a firing squad? I mean, that sounds weird, right? Well, 
it, this was so dramatic in the early days that people, like when we wear crosses, people would never wear crosses in the first se several centuries. This, the memory is just too potent, uh, too horrific to even think about. And yet Jesus, that's where he went. He went through the cross. So come at 7 p.m., venerate the cross here, a long, longer engagement of the passion narrative. So again, we can kind of soak in the event itself, remember how much Christ has done for us. Then, with, not without hope, of course, then we receive the Eucharist to give us strength so that we can be given the power through Christ, through His grace, to then receive His love, His mercy, and His strength to go forward in our life. And of course, the next day will be Holy Saturday. On Holy Saturday, in the evening at 7 p.m. again, we will then celebrate the beginnings of Easter. We will be baptizing those who are the elect. We'll be confirming as well those who are coming into the church from another faith tradition. And both of those groups will receive confirmation. It's going to be glorious. I want to encourage you to come. You might need to come early. People have been journeying through what's called the RCIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, or soon to be called the Order of Christian Initiation for Adults. And Christ is trying to encourage all of us to open our hearts, to, to open our hearts to his very presence, to reconvert, to be renewed through his pa suffering, his passion, his death, and his glorious resurrection. Happy Easter, everybody. God bless you, and I hope to see you this weekend as well. Bye-bye.